Um, a lot of these initiatives that have been filed uh, have been filed because we have a different dynamic. When we had Prop 75, 76, and 77 a couple of years ago, when some hundreds of millions of dollars were spent, it was a fight between Arnold and business on one side and labor on the other, and labor won, and Arnold lost all those initiatives, right? The, the labor now has come up with a much better, and actually business too to some extent, a different approach. We're going to put these initiatives on the ballot as, as ways to detract your money. We're going to go on oil severance tax. We're going to do a split oil property tax so that you then can't hit us over here on pensions or hit us over here on something else. So it's become this big chess game way past what we've seen just even a decade ago in how this plays out. And so all this money gets spent. We're seeing now this effort afoot with the redistricting, right? We just passed a redistricting initiative, and now there's another initiative to, to extend it to, to Congress and to remove it, right? In this chess game that's being played. None of which, I mean, yes, it's honest in the sense that these are honest interests, but at the end of the day, people just throw their arms up because they're so frustrated. Why are you making me vote on all this stuff? But in fact, it's not the failure of the system to do it. It's the it's the fodder. It's the it's the it's the place that California finds itself in the larger dynamic, and kind of a structural problem that we have. Where we still want to give people power, but we have this playground where you can really work in. And I don't know what the answer is, but it's 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 a tough situation. It's way past it's way past rational. Let me uh, let me offer a, let me offer another perspective on the threat of special interests. Uh, uh, threatening ballot initiatives. And once again, I'll go back to what I said earlier, a special interest is someone with whom you disagree. If there's someone with whom you agree threatening a ballot initiative, it is a noble quest. And I'll give you an example of that that goes back a few years. Um, has anyone in this room ever heard of a guy by the name of Reed Hastings? Many of you have, as the CEO of Netflix. Now years ago, I'll admit to you, back in the mid-90s, Reed told me he was going to start this business that sent DVDs in the mail. I said, don't be ridiculous. Who in the world is going to watch movies that they get in the mail? <laughs> I also predicted that Hillary Clinton was going to be president. That there was no way that Scott Brown would win the Massachusetts Senate race and that the Indianapolis Colts will win the Super Bowl. So take everything I say for the next 90 seconds with a very large grain of salt. But what Reed Hastings did before he invented uh, Netflix is he was, and still is, an education reformer. And he decided that, he, that one of the problems facing California schools was not enough freedom, not enough flexibility. And he became a very strong advocate of charter schools. Now, if, if you are a member of UTLA, the charter school movement is a special interest. If you, like me, think allowing parents and teachers to work and administrators to work collectively uh, to find new ways to take on these educational challenges, then it's not a special interest, it's a noble quest. So here's a threat. Reed Hastings went to Sacramento, and he met with Bob's predecessor as speaker. He said, here's the deal. I'm going to put an initiative on the ballot to expand the number of charter schools in California. Right now, this is back in the 90s, there were 100 charter schools allowed in a state of 38 million people. He said, I think there should be more than that. And the speaker's advisor said, well, we don't. And Reed said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to put an initiative on the ballot, and I'm going to spend a lot of money to pass it. And you're going to raise a lot of money to try to beat it. And I'm going to spend even more money to try to pass it. And you're going to raise more money to try to beat it. But you know what? and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm really, really, really rich. <laughs> and I have more money than you do. And I'm going to pass my initiative, but it's going to cost us both gazillions of dollars. So I'll tell you what, why don't we come to a compromise? We'll expand the number of charter schools in California. I'll get about 75 or 80% of what I want. You'll save your pride. But both of us will save tens and tens of millions of dollars. We'll come to a compromise. So if you oppose what Reed Hastings was trying to do, He's a special interest hijacking the system. If you think what he did was a good thing, then using the initiative process as leverage, as opposed to the tribes of unions or whoever your special interest of choice is, well, then it's a good thing. Going to back to my point earlier, this is all in the eye of the beholder. If it's something you want done, this process works terrifically. If you don't, then it needs reform. It would be a great thing if they both donated the money they were going to spend on education. <laughs> I know that it was one of those guys that did give a lot of um, and before, I, one question I want to ask, uh, just kind of an open question before we get to questions from the audience. Uh, are we, uh, huge news, uh, I'm spending a lot of time on it locally, but it's the same at the national level, with the economic challenges that we face right now. Do the economic challenges that we face on a national level, state level, local level, is it going to affect 
the proposition um, uh, lay of the land for the next few years? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, Bob described the uh, battles of one side forcing the other side by saying uh, the, the, more, the interests will want more revenue. We said we're going to raise a, we're going to create a split role, raise property taxes in California, or we're going to, or we're going to do something. And they filed all these initiatives. And the other side filed initiatives and said, well, pensions are too costly to the state of California, so there's a pension initiative, reform initiative out there. And they looked each other in the eye and said, well, if we do all this, it's going to cost us a lot of money, and the economy's not great right now, and we don't want to go to war. And all, most of those initiatives are, are going by the wayside. They're not, going to, they're not going to be contested in this November election. Yeah. Uh, and, and part of the reason was the economy. Even though you would think that folks who want more revenue would say, now is the time we need more revenue. They understand because of the economy, that frames the discussion because people who uh, are hurting are not necessarily, even though they may want to support the education folks, or may want to support some of the more revenue uh, intensive uh, items on the ballot, they know that, they, they do their polling. They poll and they know that people aren't interested right now in raising taxes. Hey, let me just add one dimension to that, uh, Joel. You're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, but but the, what happens is, that, for example, the local government people are just flipping mad that they that the state keeps taking money from them because local government generally is a subset of the state. And in the county of Los Angeles actually happens to be in pretty good financial shape uh, for a number of reasons. But the these other governments are angry. So what they're doing is they're putting in this ballot box budgeting that says, "Don't touch my little piece of cheese," right? And the counties aren't doing it; but it's the cities that are doing it because they want to, to not have transportation funds or other dollars being used for other purposes because the state is using those dollars to balance their obligations for in-home health services or other kinds of things. So those fights are happening because there's less money in the process. Uh, uh, and there's some other examples, but that's probably the best example. On a, on a broader level, what a down economy does to the initiative process is two things. Number one, what we're seeing now, not just in California, but across the country, this is probably the greatest wave of populist voter I know we've seen since the early 1990s. Not coincidentally, at the time that the last recession was ending. And when voters get angry, they get suspicious. As we're seeing now, whether you're a Tea Party or whether you're MoveOn.org or anywhere in between, when you're angry, you're suspicious of those in power. And angry, suspicious voters tend to vote no on initiatives. Most initiatives, almost all initiatives, with one exception. They vote for initiatives, they put it to the politicians. I saw a poll recently that showed the majority of Californians think that term limits are not working. That same poll showed that the majority of Californians do not want to repeal term limits. They really want to stick it to the politicians. And a reform initiative, however it's framed as an anti-Sacramento or anti-City Hall or anti-Washington initiative, is the one exception on this kind of landscape. And I'll make you this prediction, not for this year, but the next couple of years. You'll see an initiative for a part-time legislature in California which I suspect will be the, 2000, the uh, 21st century version of the term limits movement we saw back in the early 90s. It's amazing uh, because I see this a little bit differently than that. <coughs> I think that because of the economy, that every, and I go back to my very first comments, the intellectual dishonesty that is going to be put up on one side or the other in selling their message, they're going to drive the economy to, to sell their initiative. Uh, and you, you can see that, again, I'm uh, harking back right to what I'm going to look at. The biggest thing on my playbook right now is medical marijuana. Taxing. It's going to sell that. Hey, it's going to be a great tax bill. A great tax bill. We're going to save the state by taxing. And, 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 and uh, on the term limits argument, look what happened when we got an extension of term limits in LA for city council. Uh, we got an extension. Uh, Four-year extension on the backs of the drone when everybody hates a politician. Just in the interest of fairness, that term limit extension passed by saying, put the screws to the politician. That's exactly right. right. It's intellectual it's dishonesty. It's intellectual. it's intellectual dishonesty. And that's exactly my point, is that you can put anything out there if you have enough money. 